My name is Manu Prakash. I'm a faculty in the Department of Bioengineering at Stanford. My lab primarily focuses on frugal science. We think about how to make cost-effective solutions for medical problems. If you think about COVID in general and the challenge for diagnostics, the reality of the situation is we do not have enough resources to a point where now the pandemic is spread so broadly that we need to be thinking about another scale of testing, which would be home testing. So what you're looking at is a hand-powered centrifuge. Uh, so this is literally a centrifuge in the palm of your hand that you can take anywhere and build uh, different tests on top of this platform. Hi, my name is Adam Larson. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the laboratory of Manu Prakash. Recently, I've been working on frugal solutions for COVID detection. And now I'm going to walk you through the steps of the HandyFuge lamp assay. The assay starts with collecting saliva. So we collect about half a milliliter. And after that, what we need to do is inactivate the saliva. So we have this inactivation solution. And this will do two things. It will break open the cells, releasing the viral RNA, which is what we are going to detect in the end, as well as keep that RNA from being degraded. So now that we have added this reagent, we're going to boil it in water at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes. After this, the sample is completely inactivated, so there's no infectious virus left, but the RNA of the virus is stable. The next step will be to spin this in a centrifuge. And so in this step, we spin down anything that will prohibit the reaction that we're going to use in the end to detect the virus. So everything that we don't want will be stuck at the bottom of the tube and the viral RNA will be in solution. So we transfer it to a new tube. So now in this tube, we have our viral RNA, if present, and it's stable. What we want to do is enrich this. So we want a very high limit of detection. So what we're gonna do is just add these glass beads. It's a very simple solution of desiccant matrix. So now that we've added the glass beads into the solution that has the RNA, if present, we'll just let this sit for around 10 minutes at room temperature. So after 10 minutes, any of the viral RNA, if present, will have bound to these glass beads. And now what we want to do is spin this down so the glass beads will be at the bottom. So at this point, we could simply pour this off. And so now what we have is just the glass beads, which will have the viral RNA if present, and they're stuck to the bottom of the tube. So what we can do now is wash this with alcohol. And so now the viral RNA, if present, is stuck to these beads and it's super stable. So what we can do is either store this or directly go to the reaction. So if we want to do the reaction right away, we'll just add these reaction mixes to this exact same tube and proceed with the reaction. So then for the reaction, we'll incubate this tube at 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. So at the end of the 30 minutes, we can check if there's no viral RNA present, the reaction mixture will stay pink. If there is viral RNA present, you'll see this pH change and the reaction mixture will change to this yellow. And the limit of detection has been shown to be about one genome per microliter, which is on the standard of the current test used by the FDA. What you just saw is a fairly straightforward protocol uh, of the work we've been doing, especially building on uh, other people's work in the scientific community. And one of the perspectives of this work is that uh, the readout should be simple enough. Uh, so you were able to look at these uh, uh, tubes and the change in that color tube literally tells you whether the test is positive or not. So you don't need any other gadgetry to be able to read these sets of tests. One goal of this work is to make the sets of steps that you saw simple enough, uh, and we are currently working on that to simplify it even further, so that in a single step and uh, 30 minutes of time, you should be able to get a reliable test that anybody can run. You don't need to be trained in any manner to run reliable COVID tests.